to I want to talk about the CRA. Uh, this is the Congressional Review Act, and it was used very effectively, it seems to me, by the Republicans when they first came in four years ago, four and a half years ago. Uh, this allows Congress to reverse an executive action that was proffered, I think, within six months of six working. Right. Is it? I mean, it's hard to it's six. It's 60 legislative days. Right. And, we, you know, it, that's kind of an impossible thing to really uh, 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 put into practice. But my understanding is it's any regulation that the Trump administration finalized after August 20th. I, I forget the exact date, but it's, it's sometime in mid to late August of last year. And Congress can not only reverse it, but when they reverse it, it then creates a new threshold to reinstate it where you need two thirds of Congress, right? Is that not right? Uh, that my sources tell me that that's a little bit overblown. Uh, the, the language in the Congressional Review Act says that nothing substantially the same can be added, uh, can be you know, promulgated uh, unless Congress gives its assent. And there is, I don't think there's a threshold like that that you're talking about, two thirds. Um, it just says that Congress needs to give the go ahead. In other words, a, regula a regulatory agency can't do it on their own. But uh, there's, there's pretty decent wiggle room in there. And in fact, you know, as you said, Trump used this 16 times during uh, 2017, because the only time you're going to use something like this, right, is during a changeover in administration. Joe Biden isn't going to sign a piece of legislation that overturns one of Joe Biden's uh, regulation. So the only time to use it is during this changeover. Trump used it. And in two occasions, they the, the regulatory agency did put together a regulation that was similar, maybe not substantially the same, but similar to the regulation they got rid of. So uh, that that should not be seen as a barrier here. Uh, some people on the Hill are talking about that in, the, in those terms, like we can't do Congressional Review Act things because then, we, then it ties the hands of the regulators and, and we don't want to do that. Well, that's not really true. Uh, so that should not be seen as a barrier. So, but here's the state of play. So it is now March 12th. In order to meet the, the considerations and get the fast track support, because the important thing about this is you only need 50 votes. This is the, one of the only pieces of legislation where you only need 50 votes in the Senate to get this passed. So you can overturn regulations from the Trump era that were done after August of last year with a simple majority. And, and there's nothing else like this right now. I mean, the reconciliation bill is done. There's another one maybe on the way, but that's going to take some time. So this is the thing that you can do on the floor of Congress right now. Congress has, and this is any member, until April 4th of this year to introduce Congressional Review Act uh, resolutions uh, so that they qualify for this process. To date, zero of them have been introduced. Nothing has been introduced right now. And there's only a couple weeks left here. Uh, Congress goes on recess, uh, at least the House does, at the end of March. So House members, AOC, uh, all of these House members have basically two weeks. Now, it's not hard to write one of these regulations, uh, one of these resolutions. All you basically have to say is, I repeal this regulation. I mean, that it's a one-page bill. It's, it, it doesn't require a lot of drafting. But they only have until April to introduce it, and they only have until around mid-May to get them passed. So, so this, is, this is kind of a red alert thing. If you want to make some legislative progress and, and pass something with only 50 votes, you need to do it right now. Why haven't they? Is it really just like, uh, I mean, is it possible that there's a member of Congress uh, watching us right now going like, oh, geez. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I honestly, I mean, I'm not, I'm, I, you know, like I'm not being facetious. Like, I think that I think people don't necessarily realize that, like, it's sort of like that. 
Right. I mean, there's I mean, part of I mean, I like uh, trying to sort of like, um, you know, we, we have this one point nine trillion dollar bill and we're still finding out things that are in it. I mean, right. you know, and and part of that is because it's called to the attention of a member of Congress who may sit on a committee. They decide this is my pet thing. I'm going to put that in. But it's not like they're walking around with this knowledge of it. It is. People like yourself and and other writers and and think tanks who say you can do this and you also need to do it by then. And that's what uh, alerts them to this. I mean, that's what like when people ask, like, how can we push our representatives? It's almost just sort of like making enough noise about something that's fairly obvious so that they pay attention to it because they got a lot of things on their plate. Well, I mean, I think that's true to an extent in this case. uh, I think that the focus of the American Rescue Plan was certainly uh, one factor here, that it, it took up a lot of oxygen. Uh, I know that that Congress is aware of this. I mean, I, I talked to Representative uh, Raul Grijalva last year. Uh, he's the chair of the Natural Resources Committee. I asked him about this, and he said, oh, yeah, we're, we're coming up with ideas of, of what to do. I think there's sort of larger strategy sessions taking place uh, where they're trying to figure out which ones have the votes to pass and that's the ones that they will introduce. Uh, I, I don't think that's the best policy, actually. I, I think you just introduce a bunch of these bills. It doesn't mean they have to go on the floor, uh, but but that's seemingly the way that they're going about it. And uh, I, I, I am concerned that we're we're not going to see a lot of action on this front where it's it's i mean these are these are legitimate things they're the the coalition for sensible safeguards came up with i believe 28 different possibilities here of uh pieces of regulations that could be overturned and they're significant they're things like uh, a rule that trump put together to put cost benefit analysis uh, and, and change the calculation of that in environmental legislation so that uh, it's much easier to make environmental legislation or regulations uh, uh, go forward. Uh, if, you, if you repeal this, it would be easier. Obviously, Trump was making it much, much more difficult. Um, there's a rule called the true lender rule. And what this allows is non-bank online payday lender companies to uh, what they call rent a bank so that they can get the protections of federal preemption so that they can charge a lending rate at any rate that they want, any interest rate that they want, and not be bound by state systems that sometimes limit interest rates to, say, 36 percent annual percentage rate. Uh, so these, but these would be much higher than 36%. These would be 200%, 300%, 400% interest rates that you get in online payday lending. And it would be allowable if this regulation is allowed to stand where they can say, oh, we routed it through a federal bank and the federal bank is allowed to do that. So there are very consequential regulations that you can deal with here. And it's a little bit baffling to me that Congress has not even taken the initial step right. to, to try to get this done. Uh, all right. Lastly, uh, 50 days in, just got a, a minute or two here. Uh, give me a, uh, your sense of the appointments. Um, we had some very good appointments on the Federal Trade Commission. The, Tim Wu, Lena Khan. Uh, you know, uh, in terms of antitrust, I know that's, um, but, but give me your sense of like, you know, how are progressives doing in that respect? You know, we, we can see what's happening on like a cabinet level, but, but, but backfilling in those positions is really important because either the people are making the sort of the day-to-day, um, decisions, we just got about a minute, minute and a half. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think it's still not fully baked. It's, it's still, there's some incompletions there, even with uh, Lena Khan uh, uh, getting uh, an open seat on the Federal Trade Commission. Uh, it, it's still the case, despite that, that uh, there's, there's one empty seat that hasn't been filled uh, uh, because Rohit Chopra 
is leaving the Federal Trade Commission to run this, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. So Linus is, that's a tremendous thing that is, that is happening, but the swing seat, the third seat, will actually tell the tale of what the Federal Trade Commission will be empowered to do. And you see this across the government. Uh, I mean, obviously, cabinet positions are in place, but in these lesser positions, uh, uh, more obscure positions, not lesser necessarily, uh, the jury's still out. Jury's still out. I'll take that. David Dayen, always a pleasure. Uh, folks can, um, I cannot recommend, well, heading over the prospect uh, for, for all of it, frankly, uh, but your uh, uh, first 100 days uh, newsletter. Um, if I could change anything, I would move you to Nova Scotia so that I could get just a couple hours earlier in the day. 